Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your January 2018 love reading. It's Raina here and so before I begin, just a couple of housekeeping uh, things. There is a 2018 general tarot forecast for you available on my channel, so check that out. And there's a companion 2018 love reading on Vimeo. This is specifically for people who are um, looking for a new relationship called New Year, New Love, and the link for that is below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. The link for that is below where you can order personal readings. And the other thing, oh, there was some, one more thing. I wanted to just tell you that in January, um, well, this isn't a, a, something just for January. Your fifth house is Aries, okay? So we have Uranus transiting through Aries. In 2018, Uranus, I don't know what month it is. It's going to go into the next sign, into Taurus. It's going to leave Aries, go into Taurus. But then, as often happens, it dips back into um, Aries and uh, stays there until 2019, I think. And then it finally goes into Taurus full time. So while Uranus is still in this fifth house, you can look for your love life. This I'm talking about like that falling in love period, meeting people. To be very... Uh, perhaps unusual, um, I was going to say even somewhat chaotic, where unpredictable, that's a better word, unpredictable, which can be a really good thing because you might meet somebody in the strangest of circumstances, the most random of circumstances, like going to the grocery store, and it turns out to be your soulmate. But it is a harmonizing uh, energy because both of these uh, planets, your sun, well, you know, or if you, if it's your rising sign, it's not a planet, I guess, but both of these entities are in fire, and fire is a, is, you know, any planets that are in fire signs form a trine to you, and so it's, it's going to be something that easily manifests, okay, so that's one good thing, too, is that you can easily manifest something that seems like it comes out of nowhere. Um, and, of course, I would say the vast majority, unless you're in an arranged marriage, the vast majority of love situations happen when you least expect it, don't they? So this kind of bodes well for that sort of um, situation. Uh, now let's see what else. No, I think that's about it. So I'm gonna I've been shuffling the cards a little bit. Just gonna spread them out, and we shall begin. And I think even like having. Saturn leaving Sagittarius is helpful because it was the first house and it's like kind of really the first house is is the framework for everything it's how everything begins and it could be like an overall influence for the last few years where you may have felt like your hands were tied in some way and your hands were tied for an important purpose, to keep you from flaking out, from, you know, being, as a fellow Sagittarian, I can say this, being kind of like, uh, I, I was going to say, a um, jack-of-all-trades, master of none, uh, you know, which is actually probably more like Gemini, which is our opposite sign. You know, Gemini is associated with versatility. But Sagittarians are mutable signs as well, so we have a tendency to kind of stick our fingers in different pies, you know, and 
not really focus sometimes on one thing. We have multiple interests. And uh, Saturn and Sagittarius might have kept you more, um, you know, in that, uh, that focus. But then it might have felt restrictive in some way. So now you might feel a little bit more liberated is what I'm trying to say. So for January, the overall influence is the Hierophant. The Hierophant, it's funny because I really had a problem, <laughs> or I still have a little bit of problem with this card because it is associated with Taurus. But everything that this card represents in terms, most everything, really seems to point to Sagittarius. You know, it's about philosophy, a philosophical framework. Obviously, religion is one of those frameworks that it's philosophy-oriented. Also, it can relate to the, um, I think even higher education is connected to this card. But also, this is, can be a card of conventional wisdom, I think, and, and um, doing things by the book, conformity. So those things are not necessarily Sagittarius. But I did, ha I, I have this book that lists all these different, you know, people that, that um, would make these connections with the cards. And I found one person in the past who connected to Sagittarius. So that made me feel good. But it's generally, the general consensus is that this is Taurus. So if there's a Taurus person in your life, now this could be someone currently in your life or somebody from the past who has had a great impact on your life, this may be going on in January. Somehow their hand is in some of this. And it could even be an X for that matter. But if we're looking at themes, this could be about deciding whether or not to get married. And with Sagittarius, it is a loaded question because it does involve conforming to tradition. And Sagittarians typically do not like tradition. Unless you have a lot of um, Capricorn in your in your personal planets, maybe if you have like a, a moon in Cancer or something like that, where you have that that love of family and 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 uh, old fashioned values, you may have have a little bit of a um, of a desire to live that way. But a lot of Sagittarians, men and women kind of like um, flinch at the thought of anything that impedes their freedom. And whether it's making it legal, official, and having to act in a certain way, uh, come home at a certain time, answer to a certain person, that can be a bit um, threatening to them, as well as anything involving fitting in with the norm. You know, all fire signs uh, want to be individualists. That is how we uh, see ourselves. We are very creative. Now, whether you're an artist or not, it doesn't matter. There's that sense of wanting to kind of showcase who we are as opposed to who someone else is. So joining together in this kind of a marital situation isn't necessarily top on our list of priorities. And so you may be grappling with this if you're with someone. Now in the past position, there is, um, we have the seven of wands, which is a very defensive energy. So that's interesting. Now, this, this doesn't have to be somebody that's actually in a relationship. You may be a Sagittarius woman um, who is starting to feel, maybe in your 30s, starting to get really angry about people asking you when are you going to get married, when are you going to settle down, when are you going to have a kid, <laughs> and things like that. And you feel like you have to defend yourself against that. Now, this could also be within the realm of a relationship that is where you feel on the defensive and the other person is always questioning your motives and, you know, kind of um, making it seem like you're not in the right all the time. 
and you may be maybe you're engaged to this person or th thinking about getting married and now you're rethinking it but i really came to that idea of defensiveness about settling down because we have here for the current energy the empress so this is like the the earth mother this is that um card that represents possibly having a child definitely a creative card in one form or the other so whether you're an artist um, but this is a love reading so i'm thinking of having children so if you it, you know in some people's situations it could be that you're fighting with a partner or feeling maybe you're not trying to fight with them but they are giving you problems and then you find out you're pregnant and you're like oh no what do i do next because I, you know, this, this happens, I, this probably happens more times than we know, where some, where a woman gets pregnant while she's in, while she's second guessing or, uh, or, or um, not second guessing, while she's thinking, rethinking a relationship. And when she's just about to get out, she finds out she's pregnant. If you are in that situation where you find out you're pregnant after you have kind of made up your mind that you're in, in an unhealthy relationship. The answer is not to double down and say, well, I've made my bet, I'm going to lie in it. I guess it depends on the individual situation, but if you're in a, in a situation where somebody is like attacking you, even if it's verbally, and trying to keep you off balance all the time, then you might have to look for alternative um, um, solutions. Instead of just um, kind of going along with the program, so to speak. But for other people, if you're in a situation where you feel defensive about uh, pressure from family and friends to get married, another time too is when you're in your first Saturn return. You may have friends who are starting to get married Maybe you're even, um, you know, in the wedding party for some of these people and they start questioning you. Remember that there's safety in numbers and people tend to, when they're insecure about something, they want everybody else to do what they're doing. That's when you know that they're insecure. When people are really living their own lives and making their own decisions in an autonomous way, they're not thinking about what other people are doing to make sure they imitate them. That's like monkey see, monkey do. And if you feel that sense of pressure, it could be that you're not with, you've kind of outgrown this circle of um, friends, that they are not, they're not at that level where they can understand that it's really up to the individual and they are really in that conformist mode and that's what the Hierophant might suggest. Um, another thing too is like with people people who are older who have the same thing happens with grandchildren where um, I, I've, I've, I've um, witnessed it where I heard people talking about their grandchildren they, they were kind of like one-upping each other Oh yeah, well she's going to hear, they're bragging about it. And I was thinking, that is so sad, you know, that people, that they're using these other people to feel important. And it's not, I'm not talking about just casually, um, you know, talking about what they're up to. I'm talking about this was a big group of people and it just seemed, I could feel that they were kind of, uh, someone was trying to outdo the other person in a way. And um, so you may be dealing with your, your um, some situation that involves your uh, daughter having a child. And um, in your case, if you're having some love relationship, you may feel torn because you're with somebody who is maybe in a, different, uh, in a different mindset, and you want to help her. I mean, I don't know exactly how that would play out. 
but it doesn't have to be that you're the one who's pregnant. You may be um, dealing with your child and it's affecting your relationship, especially if that is not the, if your daughter is not the child of your partner, that you may feel, because this, this is the spiritual message, is feeling like torn or um, at, a, at a standstill, some kind of um, fork in the road here, where you feel like you have to choose between two people, your daughter or your partner. And your partner may, may be trying to uh, make some kind of insinuation that your daughter is coming be between you and, and uh, him. But in the case of um, someone who is in a relationship with somebody, you may be deciding whether or not you're going to get married to this person because you're not sure. And when I say married, I, it doesn't have to be a legal marriage. It could just mean that you're going to take that next step where it's a greater commitment, maybe moving in together, buying a house together. And you, you're kind of like you have doubts because you're not sure that you even want to have a child with this person, um, that they are really marriage material. And so it could really be like this, this, um, I don't know, lack of, this indecision on your part. What crosses you is represented by the five of pentacles. This is a very important card, I think. This is a card which I think really affects people when they are deciding whether or not to leave a relationship. The five of pentacles is lack consciousness. And when it comes to relationships, when people feel like I better, you know, continue with this person because otherwise the, the alternative is I'll be alone. There's only so much to go around. I'm a certain age and, I, you know, the chances of me finding somebody else are not great. I better just settle for, for this person. That to me is a very dangerous mentality, but it certainly is something that people think and it's it's unfortunate because settling for less can be very destructive it can cause people to allow themselves to be in degrading relationships where they're constantly being accused of things um, put down and feeling like they're always having to defend themselves. It's not a good place to be. So if that those thoughts run through your mind, the first thing to think about is, how do I know that to be true? What, what evidence do I have that that is true? And the other thing too is, why would it be better to be with somebody who is even verbally abusive than to be with alone? How is that better? And you will, you will see that your conclusions, the things that you have believed about life, are really false. The advice, or what's coming in, is represented by the King of Wands. And this is a card of, um, you know, supreme confidence, leadership abilities. This could be somebody that comes into your life who is a mature fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, so a fellow fire sign. And this person is going to be the highest expression of fire in a very confident, positive way. Um, this person could be kind of a take charge kind of person, but not in a tyrannical kind of a way. They may just simply be very, there's a lot of masculine, masculine energy from this person. And um, they could be really someone that you have a lot in common with. Not just in terms of interest, but in terms of temperament, where you're both very enthusiastic about life. Sometimes... One of the greatest pitfalls that a Sagittarius can uh, find themselves in 
is getting involved with somebody who is negative, even in a very uh, covert kind of a way. You want somebody who thinks big, is very uh, positive. They're not complainers. They're not um, people who are petty. They're generous, you know, things like that. And this person would be all of those things. The outcome is the chariot card, which is a card of victory. And I feel like the victory is really coming from understanding your your value. And once you 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 really kind of like if you're in this kind of a crossroads and and horns of a dilemma, do you you can have that aha moment where you realize that your self-esteem really matters. And actually, you know, speaking of which, in January, there is a new moon in, in Capricorn on January 16th. Which Capricorn is the second house for Sagittarians. Now, this is where Saturn is moving into that second house. And it's, it's dealing with earned income, but also possessions, but also self-esteem, which is kind of like how we value ourselves. Just like, you know, the money that comes in is, is our value for the work that we do. The, the second house can also relate to self-esteem and you have a new moon there. So there could be a new beginning in self-esteem. And this is this victory that you have been wanting that kind of frees up all of this, these, um, the stalemate that might have been going on inside of your mind. So anyway, uh, Sagittarius, I hope you enjoyed this and I wish you all the best in January. Take care. Bye.